I believe that women deserve to be heard and I believe that they need to be listened to. But I also believe that those allegations have to be investigated by credible sources. The New York Times did a deep investigation and they found that the accusation was not credible. I believe Joe Biden. So what you just heard there was Stacey Abrams last night on CNN with Don Lemon. And she is one of the front runners to be Joe Biden's vice presidential running mate. And she's caught there telling a bold faced lie. She is suggesting, along with the Biden campaign, that Tara Reid's story was investigated by the New York Times and the New York Times said the story was uncredible. But that is 100 percent not true. A lot of journalists are covering it right now, major journalists from a variety of outlets which say that the New York Times does not make that claim. I've covered that New York Times article, the one that covered Tara Reid's story. And I was very critical of that article for how it framed Joe Biden and his past actions for the way in which it talked about Tara Reid. But it's true to say that at no point in that piece does it make a clear statement. Tara Reid is telling the truth or Tara Reid is not telling the truth. It doesn't take a clear stance. Tara Reid is credible or Tara Reid is not credible. The piece does not do that. And the Biden campaign, including his potential VP pick, are going out to the media, going on CNN, going on other outlets and lying about what that New York Times piece says. It is a travesty how they are lying to other media sources. They are lying to the American people. Even Chris Kaliza from CNN talked about this on Twitter, saying that when Joe Biden, when Stacey Abrams, when others say that the New York Times said that Tara Reid and her story are not credible, they are not telling the truth. They are adding something to the New York Times piece that was never there. But this goes beyond the New York Times piece because that piece by now is ancient news. That piece came out a little bit ago and it was basically a recap of what we knew to that point. But since that piece came out, we know a lot more. After that, Ryan Grimm at The Intercept talked about the 1993 Larry King live show where Tara Reid's mother called in to the show to talk about Tara's story. We did that in a video and that after the transcripts were unearthed, somebody went and found the actual audio visual clip from that Larry King episode. And then after that, there was reporting done by Rich McHugh at Business Insider, which talked to two people that knew Tara Reid in the early mid 1990s who corroborated her broad story, including a former colleague, somebody she worked with after she left Biden's office and a former neighbor that lived around her after she left Washington to move to California. Both of those people spoke to Tara Reid and her story being credible and it being accurate in broad terms from now to back in the 1990s. Those are important details. You might not think each one of those details on their own is the nail in the coffin in terms of whether Biden did it or didn't do it. But the point is, those are three additional significant pieces of news that were not reflected in that New York Times piece. And of course, you can't fault the New York Times for not covering the future, but you can fault the Biden campaign. Stacey Abrams, Biden himself, all the Democrats complicit in lying for Joe Biden by saying that that New York Times piece is the definitive end of story detail on Tara Reid's claims. And that said article took a definitive stance declaring Tara Reid non-credible. Joe Biden is doubling, tripling, quadrupling down. This is what we warned about. When we were talking about the primaries, when Joe Biden became the presumptive front runner after Super Tuesday or on Super Tuesday, that these sorts of stories were bound to come out. You don't have the reams and reams and reams of tape of Joe Biden invading the personal space of women and young girls and then say, this guy is not going to have any skeletons in the closet. That's not going to happen. We all knew this was coming. And then when it started to happen, when the primary was still on, when Bernie was still in, we were saying there's still time to make a switch here. There's still time to change course. There's still time to recognize that this guy is a walking scandal into a very winnable election. 
it's not often you go into a one-term presidential election and have a shot at winning. And Biden, with his cognitive decline, his dementia, his right-wing policies that don't excite anyone, and yes, the stories about Tara Reid and other people make him a far weaker candidate than the Democrats deserve, or at least the people that vote Democrat deserve in this election. The American people do not deserve an election where they have to choose between Joe Biden and Donald Trump. They do not deserve such a horrid, horrid choice to make in November. And there's still time to switch this up because the Biden campaign is not going to stop lying about this story. And the only way this would have ever been dealt with is if Biden was upfront and honest. I'm not saying that would have got him off scot-free, but what I am saying is that by the Biden campaign and that by potential VP picks like Stacey Abrams openly lying about this story and the media's coverage of this story, it just drags it along for one more news cycle, for one more day, for one more week, for one more month. And before you know it, it's October, it's November, and we're still talking about this. Joe Biden's actions, Joe Biden's ideological actions and personal actions have caused great harm to regular Americans, women and everybody else. And the consequences of that are starting to be felt in electoral terms. Right now, as it is right now, it doesn't look like it's affecting the polling. But there's no guarantee that status quo is going to hold. And if the Democrats want an excited base of voters, they can't put up somebody that when the chips are down on his personal actions, spits in the face of what the Democratic Party supposedly represents in 2020 when it comes to equality, when it comes to feminism, when it comes to women's justice. So I just want to underline that this story is going nowhere. I'm not going to stop covering it. Other progressive YouTubers are not going to stop covering it. Other progressive writers and journalists and podcasters are not going to stop covering it. And it's not going to stop even if Joe Biden feels that he can trot out women to basically take the hits for him. We're not going to stop covering this. And we're certainly not going to ignore when Joe Biden, his campaign messaging, and some of his key surrogates openly lie to you and to everybody else about what the media has said thus far. Because let's be real, the mainstream media has undercovered this story. At first, they ignored it, and when they could ignore it no longer, they eventually covered it. I wasn't happy about the coverage, but nowhere among the major sources did they take a definitive stance in Joe Biden's favor. Don't let Biden's lies get to you.